Observe. For security reasons cause I do have many enemies I do not use my real voice. The voice you hear is a computer generated voice. I am victim of boss robbery by the system in the summer of 2011. There were found many broken locks at the doors. Broken lock on plastic suitcase. Suitcases emptied and robbed. Tool shed door broken and tools from it were used in the robbery, as you can see in these pictures here. Observe. All the pictures you see here was taken by my father in secrecy against the knowledge of the police that did not permit any pictures to be taken. I have lived in Sweden since 1987 when I was 7 years old. I lived at first in Stockholm then in 1997 moved to Norrköping and then in 2004 moved to Bors. This part of the story is from 2011 and forwards, in short of, how the Romanian government has worked together with the Swedish government to destroy me and my family, by robbing us in the summer of 2011 only for the reason that we do not fit their status quo. The Swedish government and the Romanian ass-kissers do anything to destroy our human values in this world, as true honest Romanians. Observe. I have had problems in Sweden before 2011, also, since 1987 cause the Swedish government paid money for us back in 1987, but that will be another chapter. I do not wish to write a book here and now. You may be wondering that, if I and my family do not have our own house then what was this house? My father had a house in Romania that was equally parted to all his siblings including my father, cause it was an inheritance from his father, my grandfather. The house itself was given to my father, but the state it was in made it inhabitable, that is, why we did not live there. All the goods in that house were ours, we put it there and were using the house with our goods bought in 24 years of Sweden. We have been robbed of values over 50,000 euros made in a time of over 24 years of Sweden in Sweden. All the gold and silver artifacts and jewelry and stuff of value were kept there to sell it someday and buy a good house. Cause that one was so old and inhabitable. In May 2011 the house got broken in and robbed. Now this is the proof that the Swedish government together with the Romanian government worked together to commit the robbery. The area of the house, including the house was well guarded. The house was at 500 meters from the Ukrainian border also the border of the European Union. The border is under surveillance 24 hours per day by the border police and therefore, so are also all houses in that area. All the entrance and exit roads of that village is controlled by the border police for papers. Border police car passes the house two times a day to guard the border and cause the house is only 500 meters from it, it is impossible not to pass. The house was well guarded. The house had a 5 mm thick and 40 mm in with steel angled bars at all windows, and steel angled bars grid at the entrance door. The yard has a 1.7 meters wooden fence with barbed wire at the top. The front fence had two locks. The back fence had also two locks. The two sheds had altogether six locks and one of the sheds were bolted in with big nails. The entrance door had ten locks and an extra key lock. The windows were nailed in and bolted with metal sheets on the other side of the glass and steel angled bars. The three inner doors that were broken had altogether fifteen locks. That makes a total of 35 locks altogether. Observe. 35 lock is as far as I can count and remember, but it could have been more. How they robbed. It took the robbers three days to rob, after they broke in. They used a car, as the robbers teen helpers who have been caught have reckoned that the grown-ups did. The robbers first cut and opened the fence gates robbed the shed where they found tools to help them further. Then they cut and opened with ease all the external locks of thinking they get in that way. But they encountered problem and stopped. Then they chose another way in by flying in through the window to in using a skinny athletic team to the robbery while a grown-up directed him what to do. They used a skinny athletic team cause a fully grown normal person could not have enough space through the window bars. They cut of the lock in the three inner doors. Observe. Not all lock were cut, some were opened with a key, as my father saw them, before the police came and made them disappeared. 
All the locks that were cut were cut with a sledgehammer making a lot of noise, yet the border police did not hear anything. Strange don't you think? In the house there were three metal cabinets, small metal vaults. Two had jewelry and money and one had only resets and important papers. They used a sledgehammer and a big axe to open one of the three metal cabinets. The second metal cabinets they used a key. The third with resets and important papers but owes for them, they never opened. The robbers destroyed furniture and suitcases, vandalized expensive clothing and goods. They robbed us also of all jewelry, money, electronics and valuable goods we had in the house. Nothing of value was held to chance. Does this not sound strange to you? It was like they knew what was inside. But how could they? Nobody than us was ever in that house. Real proof that the Swedish police is in on the robbery and had help from the Danish border police who did the Swedish bidding. In 2008 a big military helicopter with a scanner passed by and landed on a field near by asking people, asking neighbors, if that house was ours. I do not think that was a coincidence. Do you? When my father went to Romania with the bus one year earlier in 2010 the Danish slash Swedish border police at the Danish slash Swedish border between Malmo and Copenhagen scanned all the luggage and had special interest in the keys my father had with him. Why? Keys are of no interest for border police so why? Is it just a coincidence now that the grown-up robbers had keys for some of the locks and for one metal cabinet? I do not think so. Do you? Here is the proof that the Romanian police was implicated and that they were coordinated by the Romanian government. Although the robbers obviously made a lot of noise, getting with a sledgehammer the metal cabinets, the border police did not hear anything and the police did not come, although some neighbors did call the police. The robbers used a car which was never asked for papers by the border police. The teen robbers that helped the grown-up robbers were caught, after my father reported the robbery. My father reported the robbery at two and a half months later when he went to Romania not knowing of what had happened. Although they caught the robbers they never went to court until my father wrote a letter to the minister. Is that how it should be? Proof that the Romanian police and the courts helps the robbers. As you know by now there were teen robbers and grown-ups robbers. The grown-ups robbers never got arrested, although they are well known who they are. Why? So that the only ones punished is the teens and for that they are minors they only get suspension and not jail. In the court there was no talk of how to make the robbers repay the victim, that is me and my family, of what they robbed. No talk of where all the goods they robbed were. And no talk of the grown-ups robbers whatsoever or of why the police did not react when the neighbors called and of why did not the border police react when they saw and heard something was going on. The police had lied to the neighbors that they have given all their stuff back. The court only talked of the teens helping the robbers and nothing else so that the robbers get minimal punishment. The court also tried to deny the robbery ever happening by trying to post it as vandalism. Luckily we had photos and resets of the stolen goods. More proof that the Romanian police and the court helps the robbers. All the lock cut and open and cut by the robbers disappeared after the police came and the police did not recognize there were any cut of and open locks. The police said they never found any fingerprints, although the robbers admit that they did not use gloves. How could it not be any fingerprints? The teen robbers who have helped the grown-up robbers state they already found the exterior locks cut when the grown-up robbers took them as help to the robbery. Also the police refused to believe my father that all the metal cabinets were locked. The police also refused to believe my life police statement after the robbery and made their own version of your statement in the court taking advantage that my life could not be in the court at that 25 April 2012 cause of economical reasons. But why? Proof that the Romanian government and the Swedish government is in on it. Why could my life not go to court in April 25, 2012? After two years of paying the rent by the social, one month before 25 April 2012 the social in Boris Sweden decides that they will not pay the rent anymore and that I that does not have any income have to pay three parts of the 700 euros rent of my parents apartment that has the contract on my father's name. 
not mine. The social went against the Swedish law that stakes, as I quote. People with no income that have residence in Sweden are helped by the social to pay their apartment rent until they get an income. Also, minors are not part of paying the rent and therefore is not held for paying it. Although that law, they put my one and half year daughter to pay rent that is why they calculate three parts. One is me, one is my wife, and one is my one and half year daughter. Nobody is held responsible for the social in Boris going against the law. Do you see this as a coincidence? They did everything to stop us from going to court. I do not see it as coincidence. At the time the robbery happened I was living, as I do now live in Sweden Boris. While I was in Sweden I had no income, and although I had the legal right to have student money I was not given such. Why not, and what has that to do with the robbery you may ask? The answer is simple, so I do not have the money to go to Romania and know or stop what is happening. If you think of it, is it a coincidence I had no income exactly at the same period as the robbery was made and exactly at the same period as the robbers were investigated by the Romanian police? Sorry but I do not believe in coincidence after all that has happened. 24 years of value just gone in 3 days. We kept it to sell it so we could buy a house in the future. Now that dream is partly done. All the mail that was sent from Romania regarding the robbery was late when arriving to Sweden. I also found a microphone in the apartment I live in here is Sweden Boris. Here is the microphone I found under my lamp cap in the ceiling. As you can see it is hard to find cause it is very small, and considering the size of it only the secret police, Swedish Zappo has gadgets like these. Do you guys believe me now? I gave you irreversible proof that the Swedish government together with the Romanian government is out to destroy me in any way they can. I know it is hard to believe but my entire life has been anything but normal. This robbery is just one of many things that has happened in my life and when everything will start to stink you will all see I am speaking the truth. The truth that Sweden is a Nazi country where if you're not fit the status quo you're their enemy and they will try to make you worthless cause of it. Also that Romania is still under control of the old unpatriotic communist pigs that are prepared to sell their people and their country for money cause they do not have any patriotism or pride in them. Sell its people, as they sold my family in 1987 for 1 million USA dollars per person to Sweden making a bet, which now both Sweden and Romania lost, that is, why they want to destroy us. But I would rather die than be their worthless shit. Now I hope you get the picture. This is not the last of my text videos I will make more with time of more stuff that has happened to me and my family. Observe. Keep in mind this is just a small part of all the travels I have been through. Good luck to you all and God bless, with love.